Last week we started our series on moods, uh, where we discussed how our moods have changed from when we were younger to now that we are 5th and 6th graders, and how those moods have gone from about three to uh, quite a few, uh, a lot more than three. And uh, I told you a story about a time when I got angry, and uh, I got very angry with my siblings and tried to cause them harm by throwing uh, chairs in their way as they were running and chasing me around. And uh, today we're going to talk more about anger. And we're going to talk about the fact that anger is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's when we let anger have control over us that it becomes something that is bad. You know, whatever the reason is behind our anger, it can be easy to fall into the trap of letting it take over. You know, uh, maybe you have gotten angry at one point or another and, and let that take over. And uh, when we let it take over our, our body and when we let it take over who we are, it can cause us uh, to create other sins. Now, when we talk about anger, I think we're talking about three different types of anger. The first one is outward anger. And this is pretty obvious what it is, you know, like in my story from last week, um, outward anger expresses itself by me throwing chairs in the way of my siblings. I'm trying to cause them harm by outwardly expressing my anger and running around the room. The second is inward anger. You know, inward anger is where we kind of stuff it. And uh, we don't let it out necessarily, but people can definitely tell that we're angry uh, because maybe we just ignore them and uh, we don't want to talk to them. Or we just go put ourselves in our room and sit there and uh, we don't want to talk to anybody because we isolate ourselves. Inward anger is something that we try to hide, but is often able to be um, discovered by those around us. The third is protective anger. And uh, protective anger is when we see something that just makes us angry because it's wrong. And we want to protect that other person or we want to protect something um, from whatever is happening. You know, protective anger is the anger that I would, I would say Jesus had when he went into the temple. Um, if you know the story, you know that Jesus went into the temple and uh, he started overturning tables and clearing out the temple because he said, my house will be a house of prayer and you have turned it into a den of thieves. You see, that was protective anger. He was protecting the temple um, to be a house of prayer and not a den of thieves where people were robbing other people because of what they were selling. So like I said before, anger isn't wrong because if it was wrong, Jesus' anger would have caused him to sin and we know that Jesus was sinless. So he, it, it's not wrong to be angry. He was having that protective anger. But it's when anger starts to control us, when it, ha it has the potential to do more harm than good, that it becomes a problem. It's when, uh, you know, like last week when, I, when I'm throwing chairs and trying to cause harm to somebody else. Or when I just stuff it down and the harm actually comes when my internal anger becomes my outward anger because I've stuffed it for so long. Anger's bad when it starts to control who we are or what we do. Now, James uh, writes a little bit about anger and how our feelings uh, or our emotions can affect us. In James 3, 13 through 16, he says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. You see, disorder and evil practices come when we allow anger to control us. 
We let our selfishness dig in and it comes and controls us and it causes us to do many things that we don't want to do. But what do we do from there? You see, James talks about it. He says, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? That's where our anger comes from. Our anger comes from our evil desires. It comes from our selfishness. We often get angry when we don't get what we want. You see, I don't remember the actual cause of my anger from la- from the story, but it was because of something that I wanted that I didn't get. I can assure you of that. And it was my selfishness that caused me to get angry and to lash out in the way that I do or that I did. And so it's all about control. It's how do we control our anger so that we don't lash out to other people because it doesn't have to be the boss of us. I think the first thing that we can do is we can take a step back. When we feel that anger coming on, we can take a step back from the situation. I like to say a lot of times that I need I just need to go take a time out, right? Like I need to put myself in time out. When I start feeling that anger, like I need to separate myself from the situation and take 10, 15, 30 minutes, whatever I need to just calm myself down and to start thinking about whatever the situation is rationally. If I take that step back, then I can look objectively at what's going on. And then I can be honest. I can be honest about where is this anger coming from? What is actually causing it? And sometimes this is the hardest thing for us because we like to see things one-sided. We like to believe that we're right. And for us to accept the fact that we have a part in this or that it's our selfishness that gets in the way, um, can be a struggle. But we need to be honest. And we need to say, no, this, this is really where it's coming from. And the third thing is we need to own our part. We need to own what we did. What did we do in this situation that got out of hand that caused us to be angry? And how can we change that? How can we shift that? And so that it doesn't happen again. But if we're not honest and we don't own our part, then nothing can ever change. Students, anger doesn't have to be the boss of you. Whether it's outward anger, inward anger, or or, uh, protective anger, it doesn't have to be the boss of you. But we have to be willing to ask ourselves those three questions. Or do those three actions. We have to take our step back. We have to be honest. And we have to own the part that we have. I hope that in this next week, if you feel yourself getting angry, that you will take the time to walk through those three steps. That you'll take a step back. That you'll be honest. And that you'll own your part. And not let anger control who you are. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we know that you give us our emotions and they are not bad. And Father, you've given us the emotion of anger. But Father, when we let anger control us, that's when it turns into our selfish desires and our sin. And so Father, in this next week, help us to not be angry um, or help us to know where that anger is coming from and then to adjust it accordingly to our situation. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.